Hey guys, and welcome to my next weekly chat video for The Walking Dead. Okay, um, I have my notes down here. I'm just gonna get right into it because I have a lot to say. So I'm gonna start with good old Daryl. Um, I think that's a good place to start and his plan. Um, sorry if I looked down at my notes a lot. I just wrote a lot, so I don't really want to miss anything. So, um, the first thing that I want to talk about was I really think that it's interesting that the trio that kind of went through with the plan, um, are all people who are fairly, at this point, <laughs> damaged, um, in one way or another. Um, you know, <laughs> it was just really interesting to see that these these three people that I mean of the people that we really know you know Morgan Tara and Daryl are all very um, yeah I mean they're kind of all suffering in one way or another there was nobody that really had like a clear head you know logically thinking that this was the best idea right so we have Daryl who obviously you know he's feeling guilt about Glenn uh, he's feeling, uh, you know, uh, damage from just being prisoner there and seeing what they do to people and, and stuff like that. Tara is off, obviously reeling the loss of Denise. And I think there's also like a, you know, and she did a callback to the whole thing with, um, the, the, the women with the, the guns and, and stuff like that and, and taking their guns. Um, and then, uh, Morgan... <laughs> Obviously, he, we, which we saw a bit uh, this season, and I believe episode two, we saw a bit of his kind of journey of like how he finally got to the point where he was okay with killing the saviors. And I think it's a little difficult for a, a tough pill for him to swallow that people are seeing like, no, let's spare him now. He's like, wait, what do you, what do you want? Anyway, um, but I loved that. Uh, Rosita loving Rosita this season. I mean, she rocked the, the RPG, obviously always a good thing. Um, but uh, I believe in Rick Grimes. I believe in Rick Grimes. I loved when she said that it was me. It was, I was just, that's, you know, <laughs> I got a few tweets about that, by the way. Um, I mean, I tweeted about it, but I got a few tweets anyway <laughs> about that. When people saw that, that, that my Twitter bio says, I believe the, in the power of High Heels, Tacos, and Rick Rhymes, so people just <laughs> um, were tweeting me after she said that. But the other thing that I absolutely loved that Rosita said uh, when kind of discussing whether they should go through the, with this plan is, um, you know, uh, what she said about Sasha. I love that she was like, it, it, it sucks that it took seeing, you know, Sasha's dead body coming out of a coffin, you know, to, for me to realize I was making rash decisions. I like that. Um, I thought it was interesting looking into uh, Michonne <clears throat> and that I like that we kind of saw that she's having a bit of an issue because she is such a warrior and she wants to be on the front line. She needs to see it happen. She needs to see it through. She was kind of the driving force for Rick um, in that conversation that they had in the, uh, the mid-season finale of last season where she was kind of like, we gotta, we gotta go, we gotta do something, you know, um, it's not okay just to be living like this under, you know, Negan's rule or whatever. Um, so I think that she really, really needed to be a part of it. And the fact that she wasn't was a, a bit difficult for her, but I like that she kind of said, you know, it's not worth risking us. And Daryl said, it is for me. And even though I don't agree with this plan. I didn't like that it was happening. I do feel for Daryl. Does that make sense? Like, I don't, I do not, I'm not into what he was doing or Tara or anything, but I do feel that he's so damaged from everything that I feel so like strongly um, for him because you can kind of tell that he's just, he just wants to end it and he's just trying really hard to figure out a way to end it. Um, but I think it was interesting that Michonne said it's not risking us and he said it is for me. Uh, so, uh, question that I'm going to, um, put out to you guys. Do you think Daryl's actions will cause someone else to die? Um, 
And <laughs> follow up for that, do you think Daryl would ever be able to come back from that? I'm, I mean, I have a little pit in my stomach. Like, I severely hope it's not Michonne. Because they had that moment where she's like, it's not worth risking us. And he said, it is for me. If for some reason, <laughs> you know, I mean, I honestly believe that the saviors would have stayed there debating what to do um, with the walkers outside of the walls. Um, but Daryl's plan kind of forced them to fight their way out, and they were able to fight their way out, I think, because of that. Uh, let me know what you guys think about that. But I hope that they really ran out of, like, a lot of bullets <laughs> or something on the way. <laughs> Lost some people. I don't know. Something like that. Um... But yeah, I mean, so I'm just so nervous that it could be Michonne that Cause she's got a Marvel gig now. I'm just saying. Um, and but like I'm thinking, I mean, that would be too much. I don't think. But like, how would Rick ever forgive Daryl? And and um, at this point, you can see that he's pissed. Uh, you know, when he sees that there's no walkers there anymore and like, what the fuck? And where's his snipers? You know, we have some issues here. Um, and in the sneak peek that we saw on Talking Dead, you know, Negan is uh, showing up at Alexandria uh, where there's a lot of people that Rick very dearly love <laughs> are there, including Daryl. Um, and so, yeah, my next question is also, uh, will Rick forgive Daryl? For that or do you think that there's going to be more tension later on should he forgive Daryl question for all of you guys um, to kind of you know see what you guys think okay um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about Rick very briefly with him and Jadis I um, that was interesting I, I gotta say, I really did like uh, Rick's kind of badass moment at the end, but I really don't know why they didn't just shoot him. I mean, maybe the thing that I can think of is, you know, that they do, it does seem that Jadis and the crazy trash people want to make a good deal. There's a fucking fly. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that, but it went right over the camera. I'm going to kill it. Oh my God driving me nuts. Anyway, um, <laughs> so, um, I think, uh, what was I saying? It, uh, did he prove himself? I mean, I think that they want to make a good deal. So maybe if they do actually genuinely believe that he is on the winning side or that he has the fight in him, maybe that's why. Um, I gotta say, I don't love the trash people. I would rather them not be allied with them because you can't trust them for anything. But I gotta say, they are very enjoyable to watch. They're very uh, weird and kooky, and I'm kind of uh, excited about that. Um, I still do not know if we can really trust them by any means uh, going forward. Um, I'm slightly concerned that Rick is just chilling with them, like in the road. I don't know, what the hell. Um, next on the list is Dwight, Dwight, Dwight. Okay, so my first question that I'm just going to pose out there for you guys uh, to answer is, um, will Dwight end up killing Eugene? Do you think? Um, I am loving the dynamic that they're kind of weaving together between Dwight and Eugene this season, and but I have a feeling it's going to end in somewhat of a tragedy for somebody. Um, what I liked about the first scene um, with Dwight and Eugene, where he visits him, that it seemed like Dwight it was trying to really appeal to Eugene's fear. I loved that kind of dynamic um, because that's how you work Eugene, so to speak. Um, but the problem is Negan is doing the same thing and possibly doing it a little bit better. Um, but it was funny because I like when I first watched it, I think I said it in the reaction when I first watched it and Dwight was like, you know, the saviors are finished, Negan's finished, everything's finished. I was like, why are you, why is everybody like saying this like it's a done deal, like we need to stop. However, when I rewatched it, I kind of said to myself like, 
oh, no, 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 no. Um, like, I think he's actually just trying to say that to Eugene. Whether or not he believes it, he may believe it, but to scare the shit out of Eugene. So I thought that that was kind of interesting. Um... I did like when he said, you know, you don't got blood on your hands yet, um, that Dwight is super scarred by what he's done, kind of in the name of Negan. Um, and maybe Eugene doesn't feel that insane amount of guilt or that insane amount of anything like that, um, that I do actually think that Dwight is slightly suffering from. I don't think... If you go back and kind of watch the scene where he, he kills Denise, I mean, I'm assuming that that probably stuck with him. Even though he said it in a cocky way in that episode where he was like, I wasn't even aiming for her, you know? But I think over time, it's probably gotten to him a little bit. And God knows what else, you know? Um, I think that that's, uh, he's, he's currently dealing with, some past demons, as is Eugene. So I, lo I love the dynamic between the two. Um, so, uh, the number one thing that I wanted to kind of ask you guys, because I have a deep, I've, obviously I have a deep love for this show. It's my favorite show of all time. And I have a deep love for the characters, even when they're not really doing, like, what is it, you know, and I've kind of lost faith in them a bit. Like I've just, the, the roller coaster of Eugene, which I'll get into of this episode for me, was tough because I'm a big fan. I, I like Eugene and uh, driving me nuts. But it was interesting. I watched um, the reaction compilation that Skybound does, which you guys should check out because it's always really cool. Um, but everybody like. Or not everybody, but there were a lot of reactors who were really like in that scene where on the rooftop where Dwight had the gun to Eugene's head and they were like, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. And I just didn't have that reaction. I, I was, even when Dwight shot the gun, I was like, ah! like, ah! Ah! Eugene, like, which is strange. So I, I, I want to, which I know that like, I, I don't know, I just get really attached to like all of these characters and I'm definitely the type of person that if a character intrigues me, which Eugene is doing in this season, whether or not they're good or not, I kind of like them to stick around because I like, you know, getting into that more. But I was, I really wasn't, so I wanted to ask you guys, did you want Dwight to just shoot him on the roof? Are you done with Eugene? I mean, I, I know a lot of people are, and in a sense, I am as well, um, but I just don't think I was ready yet. Like, <laughs> nervous. All right, so now we are going to move on to Eugene. I absolutely adore uh, Eugene, the spotlight on Eugene this episode. I have no problem admitting that I am definitely one of those people who has just been like wanting, like cl clinging on to every little thing that I can that Eugene can possibly fall on Rick's side. It doesn't really look like that's going to happen anymore, but this whole episode was such a range of emotions for me because I was like trying to think of, you know, um, when, uh, like, when is going to be the moment that Eugene is really going to step up and I'm going to be so happy and it just didn't happen. But nonetheless, they did it really, really well. Um, so... Uh, I loved that they put Eugene and Gabriel kind of in this sort of, um, in this scene together and seeing the difference between the two. You know, Gabriel is a, is a person who couldn't really live with being a coward anymore. But Eugene, what I loved about this episode, one of the best things for me was watching Eugene convince himself, trying to convince himself that he's doing the right thing. That he's, you know, he says, you know, to Dwight, we're saviors. We save people. And and the whole thing with Negan, like, do you like saving people? Yes, I do, you know. Um, and him keep referring to them as traveling companions. They're traveling, but there's nothing more. He is trying to convince himself that it's better to not risk your life. And he is really putting, whenever you feel, just in general, I feel like anybody who feels kind of guilty about something, um, it's a lot easier to come up with excuses and reasons and all of that stuff to say, oh, I'm definitely like, a, you know, um, 
like I'm doing the right thing or it wasn't that bad or whatever um you know instead of like actually admitting to yourself like oh I am just not risking myself and all of these people risk their lives for me but they you know I didn't ask him to do it so I don't care like whatever you know I I think that he's really trying to uh you know deal with that um on another quick note, my heart completely goes out to Gabriel right now. <laughs> Eugene just yelled the fuck at and like at him, like it was crazy. Um, but also, if Gabriel is actually dying, there, and that's a question that I want to ask: Do you guys actually think that Gabriel is faking or not faking? We haven't seen a bite. I'm just saying, we haven't seen a bite. And a lot of people are saying, I feel like the sweat and the shivers and all that, that's kind of hard to fake, but we haven't seen a bite. And um, the doctor, I mean, he might've just told the doctor, like, I'm trying to get you to the hilltop. Let's try to do this. I don't know. So let me know what you guys think of, about that, if that's, you know. Um, so moving on to the scene with uh, Tanya, I believe um, is her name, and he, um, Eugene says to her, you know, are, are you not distressed that we are trapped? And she said, I was already trapped here. Eugene is entirely comfortable being, risking some morality, risking some whatever you want to call it, um, as long as he's safe. It calls back to that whole thing um, in the, the sixth episode of season six. Six episode? Yes, six episode. Um, where uh, Daryl meets Dwight and Dwight kind of, you know, Dwight says, you know, people will, <laughs> to some effect, I'm not going to get it word for word, but, you know, people will do anything to be safe and they'll kneel just to feel safe or whatever. And I think we're seeing a really interesting close look at that through the eyes of Eugene. Um, and he just doesn't seem to grasp that people aren't actually happy there. There are people that aren't actually happy there. People like Tanya. Um, and she's like, I don't give a shit. Like, I like her kind of mentality. Like, oh, Walker's gonna eat me? Oh, how horrible. My life has been so dandy up till now. So, I mean, I, I just, you know, it's interesting. Um, what I love is the fact that we're seeing Eugene, like I said, try to convince himself that he's doing the right thing, but also we have Negan who is feeding into that and he's saying things, you know, like, you're strong, you're so smart and whatever, and I respect you. He's really feeding into this whole, like, and Eugene's like, yeah, I mean, this guy thinks I'm doing good and whatever, and we're saving people. So good for, you know, um, good for me or whatever. And I liked that we kept seeing Eugene kind of break a little bit. You know, when the walkers got in, he didn't feel safe anymore. And that's when he went and went ham on Gabriel. Or, you know, when he was in his room or drinking the wine. Like, we're seeing him kind of have these issues of, like, breaking almost. Um... And that's his inner turmoil tr coming out. That's his guilt coming out. I mean, in all honesty, I think, um, and you guys can let me know what you think about that, but um, yeah, uh, I loved, I, I like that they showed Sasha's, the coffin that Sasha was in. Perfect. Beautiful way to kind of just reiterate to Eugene, no, actually, if you risk your life, if you do this thing where you're, risking your life and putting yourself out there and saving people or whatever, um, you're going to die. You're going to be in a coffin. It was like a very literal representation of that. You know, he doesn't need much more representation than, you know, Glenn and Abraham. But, you know, um, and, and as soon as he made a bullet that he was not entirely, that Rosita used, that got Olivia killed, you know, he's... He's had kind of examples thrown into his face of time and time again that if you're strong, you know, like, because we're our internal, mine, I'll say mine, because I know some of you are just so done with Eugene. I totally get it too. Don't worry. Like, I do understand. Um, but like my internal monologue watching the episode and I'm like, Eugene, like, come on, be strong, whatever. 
But I mean, the, the evidence, he's a logical person. The evidence is stacked up against that. Like, all these people who are strong and risking their lives and doing these things uh, have not fared too well in this, you know, they're all dead. Eugene's still alive. Just saying. That's kind of how his logic is going. The speech that he gave to Gabriel absolutely gave me chills. I loved it, loved it, loved it. So amazing. Josh, you killed it, you killed it, you killed it. Um... Okay, so I have two more questions to wrap up this uh, weekly chat. Uh, the first one is, why don't you think Eugene gave up Dwight? Um, do you think he really just doesn't want anybody to die? Do you think he's using it for ammo for later or something? Uh, so let me know what you guys think about that. And then the last thing, because this was an episode that had such a strong spotlight on Eugene, what do you think is going to be the course of his character? Do you think he's just going to die? Do you think somebody's going to kill him? Like, Daryl's going to kill him? Rosita? Be a weirdly poetic kind of thing with Rosita? I mean, because you got to think about how many people that she's watched die for Eugene. Because we talk about before we even met Abraham, Rosita, and Eugene. Interesting, right? Um, do you think he is going to come around and at the last second risk himself for Rick's group? It doesn't really seem like it. Do you think, you know, um, do you think he's just going to survive and just be like Negan's right-hand man and like, all right, here we go. Um, yeah, let me know what you think about his journey. Um, so... Going into the mid-season finale, I'm very nervous, especially when they end the fucking episode seven with, like, you know, make sure you watch next week for a big moment. Like, wait, what the fuck are you talking about a big moment? I don't need any more big moments. I'm good. Um, so I think maybe somebody has to die. I don't know. I do know at the beginning of the season, around that time, a spoiler went floating around and I've like refused to like check comments unless my moderators have gone through and like cleared it up <laughs> and stuff because I just don't I'm nervous like what the f I, it's, I just don't want spoilers and it's so get, very difficult when <laughs> spoilers get leaked and you're a reactor and you're like no I've been like it, it's just been a mess but anyway um I don't know what it is, but I'm assuming it's a big death. That could be something. Um, I kind of know where the comic book story goes from here, so I'm thinking some other things that maybe may not be death-oriented that it could be. I'm not sure. But anyway, um, I'm nervous, and I have so many... Ex I'm excited, but I'm nervous, and I hope that uh, tomorrow is going to be slightly kind to me, <laughs> and I won't be, like, crying my eyes out right here on this, where I sit right here on the couch and uh, bawling my eyes out. I guess we'll see. I'm, I'm so fucking nervous. I can't even end this video correctly. Anyway, okay, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you tomorrow, and hopefully let's not cry, but I probably will. All right, bye.